the agenda for today is to create a schematic symbol from scratch, create a schematic symbol from an existing AutoCAD block, and a footprint symbol. So before I dive into the symbol builder itself, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a couple of symbols and talk about tables in the parts database. You should think about the parts database before you even create a new schematic symbol. And what I mean by that is, like as an example, I'm going to do an example of creating a simple single pole circuit breaker. So I'll insert one. And I'll just throw it out in the middle of nowhere here. And what I want you to pay attention to is under the catalog data here, when I hit the lookup button. When I hit the lookup button, it goes to a category called CB. I'm inserting a circuit breaker. I only want it to look for circuit breaker catalog numbers. This category is an attribute in the symbol when you create it. And we call it the family code. And that's why it's so important that you know what your family code is going to be before you even start your first line of a symbol, let's say. Because when you use it and you want to attach catalog numbers, you want to make sure that you go to the right category when you hit that lookup button. I'm also going to show you how you can add your own tables to the parts database that comes out of the box. Because it doesn't have tables in there, let's say for an HMI or a safety relay or just different types of symbols that are, you know, CB for circuit breaker, CR for control relay, PB for push button. You're going to create some of your own tables. We encourage that. That's not a problem. But you want to have the category, which is ultimately a table in either the access database that you're using or the SQL. The category is actually a table in the database. And that table is tied to the family code attribute in the symbol when you create those. So it's no different than if I go and insert this time a push button. I insert a push button. I hit that lookup button, and the catalog browse me, browser takes me, in this case, to the PB category, as it should. That's another table in the database, which belongs to the family code attribute when you create the symbol itself. So you want to keep that in mind. So I'm going, to, I'm going to create a symbol from scratch, and I'm also going to create one. I've got some drive symbols out here that I created many moons ago in regular AutoCAD. And that's why we always tell you, don't throw anything out that you currently have in AutoCAD. You can reuse it all day long. And as you can see here in this drive symbol, there's a lot of graphics there. It took me some time to create. You know, hopefully you can download it from the manufacturer's website, but if you can't, sometimes you got to create them your own, as you know. So the graphics, I didn't throw away because that took me the longest to create when I created the block itself in regular AutoCAD. I'm going to keep that and ultimately apply the AutoCAD electrical attributes that it needs to see. So at first, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to show you a couple examples here with a circuit breaker and a power supply as well. So on the schematic tab, I'm going to go to the symbol builder. And we use the symbol builder, obviously, to create intelligent AutoCAD electrical blocks. You will find content out there whether it's in the Ascent book, if anybody took class, or just other material that you find out there that will tell you, you don't have to use the symbol builder 
to create your AutoCAD electrical symbols. That is correct, but I would discount it as well, especially when you're first starting out. And there's two reasons. Main reason is when you use the symbol builder to create your AutoCAD electrical blocks, intelligent blocks, it's going to name the symbol for you because as you all know, there is a strict symbol naming convention that you need to follow to get the full value out of your symbols. When you use the symbol builder, it names it correctly for you. You don't have to worry about knowing what the symbol naming convention is. And the other reason too, that you wanna use the symbol builder, and you're talking to somebody right now, unfortunately, that's been using AutoCAD for about 30 years, I use the symbol builder myself inside of AutoCAD Electrical to create my intelligent blocks for the simple fact that it's a good tool. It's a nice tool to use. It's quick, it's efficient. It's just an easy way to create the AutoCAD Electrical blocks. And that's why I use it all the time inside of AutoCAD Electrical. Yeah, I could use you know, the regular AutoCAD block or write block command. I know the symbol naming convention. I know the attributes I need. I still use the symbol builder just because it's a good tool to use to create your symbols. Now, first thing we do, you know, select your objects just like you normally would do when you create a block. And I'm going to wrap a window around the graphics of this breaker. In the graphics for your symbol itself, you're going to use. AutoCAD lines, arcs, circles, all the graphics, polylines, whatever you want to build into a symbol, you know, you're going to resort back to your AutoCAD knowledge as far as creating the graphics are concerned. And it's very important that all your graphics are on layer zero when you create the symbol. When you go to insert it, AutoCAD Electrical automatically puts it on the sim layer, and it doesn't matter what your current layer is. So I'm going to hit enter after I select my objects, and I'm going to pick an insertion point. Notice my snap is on. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Turn your snap on when you're creating symbols. Now over here is where it can get a little bit confusing. It has this attribute template library path. People confuse this with that's where the symbol's automatically going to get stored. Absolutely incorrect. All this library path is used for is um, the template files used to insert attributes. In the next dialog box, I'm going to insert the proper attributes that I need for the symbol. When I pick the attributes from a list, you're actually inserting a template DWG file. All those template DWG files are in this path itself. And typically you don't have to worry about it because it's going to default to whatever your project property library is set up for automatically. But that's what that path is used for. It's not where ultimately I'm going to store this custom symbol. Then we have some symbol categories. Nice part is, because I've used competitive packages, there's not that many to choose from. Sometimes you'll you know, be using a software and it's got like 30 different types of symbols. I like electrical because it narrows it down. And as you can see here from the choices, you have both horizontal and vertical parent child. That's on the schematic side. Terminals are their own category, both horizontal and vertical. Again, schematic side. And then you have three different types of footprint symbols or panel symbols. So this is important that, you know, I'm going to create a parent symbol here, but obviously if I wanted to create a child symbol or a terminal symbol, I want to make sure I choose that category. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly. And then here's the confusing part. Under type, as you can see, it has this list. Circuit breakers, control relays, fuses, power supplies, so on and so forth. 
this appears to be you know what your tag might be or the family code itself and when you can choose from this list a lot of times you use the default for the family code and the tag but when you look at this list like i'm going to create a drive symbol next there is no category for drive symbols so i would choose generic now, what these categories ultimately control is the list of attributes that it thinks that you're going to need for that category. And you're going to see here in a minute here, I'm going to pick CB, and it'll give me a list of, of attributes to use on a circuit breaker symbol. Then I'll choose CR, then I'll choose PW, just to show you how it can vary as far as the list of attributes that you have to choose from. When you choose generic, it will give you every single attribute available. So in this case, I'm going to pick circuit breaker and I'll pick OK. And when you use the symbol builder, it immediately takes you into the standard AutoCAD block editor environment, as you can see. So if I look at my list of attributes over here, you know, by the way, you don't need this block authoring palette on. That's for creating dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. You don't have to shut it off. I just do because I find it to be a little bit of a nuisance. So here's a list of attributes. I got tag, manufacturer. Notice that it's only listing two lines of description here. I got an XREF. I got a contact. Now I'm going to close this. And this time, I'm going to go right back into the Symbol Builder just to show you the differences between those templates. Pick a point here. Now, let's say I was creating a relay. So I'd pick Relay. Select OK. Now look at the list of attributes. It gives me three lines of description attributes to choose from. It breaks out normally open and normally closed cross-referencing because it knows that you know a relay is going to have contacts. And then it takes me to the wire connection and the dash link line. But these are specific attributes that it considers for a control relay. Now Let's say I was create, creating a power supply. Once again, I select my graphics, pick a base point, and then this time I'm going to choose power supply. Look at these attributes. Notice they're different. Notice there is no cross-reference attribute. It just assumes that you're not going to create a parent-child relationship with a power, power supply. It's just going to be the parent symbol. And you have some optional attributes that are included here as well, like the if you get into peer-to-peer -peer or you want to pull out a pin list, whatever. Here's some optional attributes I can use on a power supply. Now, let's say you did want to create a parent-child relationship with a power supply, which you can. If that's the case, I'm still going to create a power supply. But this time, just to show you, I'm going to leave it on generic. And I'll pick OK. When you leave it on generic, it gives you every attribute imaginable that you can use for a symbol inside of AutoCAD Electrical, as you can see. Now, let's get back to the tables I talked about at the very beginning in the parts database. If I choose generic, notice the tag doesn't default to anything. The family code doesn't default to anything. 
the family code is that table in the parts database. So in this case, I know I have a table for power supplies. I would simply type in PW right here as the default. So when I insert the symbol and I hit that lookup button, it's going to go to the PW category. Now, a lot of times, you, you, you know, the tag, especially with stuff out of the box, the tag default will match the family code but it doesn't have to. So in this case, I would type in PWS, let's say. So when I insert the symbol, the tag is gonna to default to PWS. But when I hit the lookup button, it's gonna to go to the category called PW. So if you can keep the family code in the tag name the same, great but they don't have to be. And as far as choosing the right table or creating your own is concerned, because like I said, when you create a new symbol, especially one that's different, meaning it's not a CB, a CR, a PB, an LS, you know, you might have to create your own table someday. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna show you where to do that right now. I've created several new tables in my database. So having said that, let me close the block editor again. If you ever want to get a list of your tables that are in the parts database, because you can't rely on that list that is in the, you know, symbol builder right here. This is, you know, they use it as a default when you pick one of these categories, but ultimately, remember this list is about, you know, the list of attributes that will be available when you create the symbol. Now, if you want to get a complete list of all the tables that are there, you can go to your catalog browser and it will give you a complete list of every table that comes out of the box. Here's CC that I created. Probably should have put a description next to it. I didn't. Same with BP. Same with DO. Here's drives. You don't see drives when you go to the symbol builder. Now, when you create your own tables, highly recommend that you keep them at two characters. If you don't, it just gets a lot more complicated. To create your own tables, you go to your project tab up top, and on the other tools panel, we have the add table to catalog database. I'll choose the parts database that I'm using, and then here's where I can add my own custom tables all day long. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you a description you know, if I highlight one of these, I can't see what it's actually doing, but I could go back to the catalog browser and get the description. But you're going to see things in here, you know, that just aren't in whatever normally comes out of the box. Here's HM that I created for an HMI symbol that I needed to create. I created a new table. Any part number that's going to go that belongs to an HMI is going to go to the HM table in the parts database when I add it. This is ultimately the family code when you create the symbol. So if you do create your own tables, which again is fine, just plug in a two character table name right here and also give it a description as to what it is. Because when you look at it in the catalog browser, as you can see here, it does have a description next to it. And if I look at, uh, Here's the HM, and I put a description of HMI right next to it, as you can see. So when you do plug in a description, it doesn't show up in the, you know, when you add a table, but it will show up in the catalog browser. So now I'm gonna actually create a circuit breaker symbol. So I'll go back to my symbol builder. I'll select objects. 
pick a base point. It's going to be a horizontal parent, and I do have the CB category right here, or type, and I'll pick OK. Now, notice the family code in this case, when I chose generic, both these family code and the tag were blank. When I choose CB, it automatically plugs it in to the family code and the tag, but remember, I can change the tag to be something different if I wanted it to be. I'm gonna leave it the same in this case. So now I'll start inserting attributes. So I'll pick insert attribute right here. And this is, again, remember I talked about those templates, right? This is actually a template that's stored in that library path in the first dialog box in the symbol builder. That's how it knows what to grab. So I'll just drop this in right here. And then I'll insert manufacture all the way through family code. And if anybody's ever created a symbol before, you're gonna know why those texts are so tiny. If you haven't, it's because these default to invisible. We need these attributes as part of the symbol, but we don't need them to show up on our screen. That's why they're very tiny and I don't care where I put them. Now, just like any other attribute, you can change text sizes, justifications, fonts, anything like that. Like I do have, I know of one customer of mine that actually displays the catalog number right on the schematic drawing. So what they do with that CAT attribute, I'm gonna to go to my properties and I constantly have my properties on when I'm creating symbols. What this customer does is obviously come in here, they change the text size to an eighth inch like all the other text. And then if they scroll down further in their properties, where it says invisible, they would pick no, because they want it to show up. So you can manipulate these attributes any way you want after you insert them. Now here's an example too. Notice it only lists three, two lines of descriptions. Once you get to know your attributes, actually I'm gonna insert the installation and location first. And I'll drop these down right above the tag. And then here it lists description one and description two. If you're using AutoCAD Electrical, you know that typically you get three lines of description in a symbol. Well, just because that isn't listed there doesn't mean that I can't add it as well. So all I have to do here is go to my regular AutoCAD copy command and I'll copy one of these, let's say from the insertion point here to the insertion point here. And then I'll just change this to DESC three. Now it'll give me up to three lines of descriptions that I can use. And that's because I know the attributes from experience. You're not going to know them till you've created enough of these. But essentially, even if you don't pick the generic category and you know the attribute that you want to use, you can plug it in just like any other attribute you would in an AutoCAD block. <clears throat> now I've got an X ref, I've got a contact. I'll just insert both of those as well. <clears throat> Let's say the X ref, I'm going to place down here and the contacts and invisible one as well. Now I have a rating attribute. So I'm going to 
insert one rating attribute and I'm going to drop it down right here. So, as you know, when you insert a symbol in AutoCAD Electrical, you got the tag. You got three lines of description. You got installation. You got location. You got rating. That's all the attributes that are just placed down. And I have to use their tags. Can't just make up my own. It's not going to work that way. And this is why we use the symbol builder to create your symbols. It gives me a list of the attributes that I need. I don't have to think about anything. <clears throat> now on the wire connection, I've got two here. I'll insert one on the left side. And this is why I use snap as well. All my connection points are going directly to snap. This makes life a lot easier when you insert the symbol or copy it or move it for real once the symbol's created. Now the terminal number or pin number attribute, as you can see, it's pretty close to where a wire is going to be. So I'm just going to go to my regular AutoCAD move command, and I'm going to move both of these down just a sixteenth of an inch. Whoop. And then Notice that the width factor for the rating is 0 0.7, because I'm going to punch in like 60 amp or 1 amp, whatever it is. And that should still give me enough space for the pin number attributes. Now, those terminals that I just placed down. If you have a symbol like a breaker, like a relay, like a push button, where you can use that one symbol with many different manufacturers and catalog numbers. You're gonna leave the terminal numbers slash pin numbers blank when you create the symbol. And you'll let the catalog number drive what those terminal numbers are. Because each manufacturer, each catalog number for the same push button, those terminal numbers, as you know, can be different. So you let the catalog number drive it that way you don't have to create a separate symbol for every single catalog number you have. Now we got the link lines. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna insert the dash link line attribute. So at this point, I could say I'm done. And again, if you have to manipulate any of these attributes, text sizes, location, or justifications, width factors, moving it around. You can use all your AutoCAD tools to do that. So let's say I'm done. Well, I'm going to make sure I'm on the Symbol Builder tab up top here, and I'll pick Done. Now, remember I talked about in the very initial dialog box, right? We had that list of types to choose from. That is not a list of all the tables. Here's a list of all the tables that I have in my parts database. Now it defaulted to CB, which is what I want, but if I were to, if I were to choose generic, this is where you wanna change that. You wanna change it, you know, back here, you wanna plug the family code in that you want, which is this list of tables in the parts database. So if you choose generic, and you fill that family code in, remember, whatever you fill in here, you want to make sure that you already have the table in the parts database. So then you can just pick from it, from it when you choose that generic category. So we get back to symbol naming convention. Here's the key right here. It just named the symbol for me properly. H is for horizontal, CB is the family code, one means it's apparent, that extra one means I might have an extra contact on there. So it names the symbol for me, that's why I use the symbol builder. I don't have to worry about a thing. Now you can, because a lot of people don't like the fact that it has a symbol naming convention, 
you can give it your own spin. So for the unique identifier, I'll just call this custom circuit breaker. As soon as I hit my tab key or put my cursor in another box, it updates the symbol name and the PNG file. It's going to create a PNG file that I can use to add to my icon menu. So as far as the symbol name, don't touch anything before and including that underscore. If you don't follow symbol naming convention inside of AutoCAD Electrical, you will not get the full power of the symbol, which basically means it's not going to work the way you want it to. I've had some people even try to use dashes instead of underscores. As soon as they do, something goes wrong with the symbol. So it's a must that you follow that symbol naming convention. Let it name it for you. Give it your own spin on it in the unique identifier. Just make sure you leave that underscore there. Got to have that as the separator between the AutoCAD electrical symbol name and then your spin on it. And then you just have to tell it where you want it to go. This defaults to a certain folder that can be changed in your environment file. So it automatically defaults to your own custom library folder, which is typically stored up on a shared network drive. I'm going to store this in this folder I have here. And I'll pick OK. And then I'll do the same thing with the PNG file. I pick OK. Do I want to insert? Yes, I do. Because I always like to test my symbols. I'll drop it in. Tag came in as CV because that's what the tag attribute was. That's what the default was. I hit the lookup button. Went to the CB category because my family code attribute is CB in the symbol. If I pick a catalog number, notice that it automatically fills in the rating because this particular Eaton catalog number is rated for 15 amps. So it's driving the rating catalog number is. Notice I have three lines of descriptions up here, not two. Remember, I added that third attribute all on my own. Just going to type something in here just to see where my text ends up. I'll throw a location code on here again just to see where my text ends up. And, a lo and an installation. Pin numbers. The catalog number didn't have any predefined pin numbers, so I could fill them in. Terminal numbers, if you will. And then the last big test here would be to drive or draw a wire through it. So I know that my connection points work. That's how we create using the symbol in AutoCAD electrical block intelligent symbol. And that was from scratch. Now I'll pick on the drives over here. I created this symbol right here, and I'm going to do it again just to show you. You can see that it, it truly is an intelligent AutoCAD electrical symbol. I started with this. This was the generic the name of the symbols called ACAD Indramat Drive. It was created in straight up AutoCAD. And this was created for my panel. So I'm going to create a schematic symbol and a footprint symbol out of this AutoCAD block. Now to save some time, I took the block, exploded it, which is what you would do when you're using an existing AutoCAD block or one that you downloaded from the manufacturer's website. 
so to save some time i took it and i massaged it a little bit as far as getting rid of some of the detail because this is what i'm going to use in my schematic it's already created here i'm going to show you how i created it here so i'm going to go back to my symbol builder select objects insertion point it's going to be a horizontal parent but notice i don't have the category i could pick from for drives so i'm going to leave it on generic and i'll pick okay it takes me right back into the block editor environment like i just was and notice the family code is blank and the tag is blank. Well, I'm going to make the family code default to DR, but I'm going to make the tag DRV. And then I'll insert these attributes just like I did. Whoop. On the simple breaker. I'll insert this one right about in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll take these manufacturer, catalog, family code, just like before. Let's say insert them here. Got three lines of description. I'll just insert these out to the left a little bit. And I'm going to change these justifications to left justified. Right now, they're set to center. So I'm just going to go to my properties, just like you normally would. Change it to left justified. And then I'll go installation location. I'll put these above the tag, very similar to what I just did with the breaker. And maybe I want to create a child relationship out of this. So I'll include my cross reference attribute. To save some time, I'm not going to put any of these optional ones in here. I am going to put a rating in here. And I'll just drop this one down right about here, let's say. Now I have to insert my connection points. And obviously I have a lot more than two. I'm not gonna do all of these obviously, but it's not uncommon where you're gonna have a lot of connection points to put down on a symbol like this. So I'll start with the left none. I'll go insert wire connection. Since I'm using snap, I'm going to snap right to the left side of each one of these, put all three of them down at the same time. And then I'm going to change the justification to middle left. And then I'm going to move these. from the insertion point just to the left side of the terminal. Now, in this case, this isn't the type of symbol that I'm gonna share between manufacturers. This is an Indramat drive that I can only use for this catalog number. So essentially I can predefine what those terminal numbers are. So I'm going to make this one A1, A2, and A3. Now I'm just going to put these connection points over here, and then I'll be done. So I'll go back here. This time I'm going to choose right. And I'll insert this one here. Again, look how easy it is with my snap on. It goes right to the outside of the circle that represents the terminal. And then I'm gonna change these justifications. 
the middle right. And then I'll move these, just regular AutoCAD move, from the insertion point, just to the right or the left side over there. And I'm going to label these one through six. So this will be terminal number one, two, three, four, five, six. So at this point, I'm done. These are all the attributes that I want to use. Not going to use any of the optional ones. Got a rating in there. So at this point, once again, I'm going to pick done. Now here's the generic, right? Right now the symbol name is HDV1. Anytime you choose generic, it's going to give you the DV. Well, I want a drive category. There it is right there. Pick it. Notice that it immediately changed my symbol name. So that's why when you choose generic, you want to know ahead of time. Remember, I plugged in over here. I can't see it anymore. But I plugged in for the family code DR. And I made the tag DRV. Now I want to make sure when I get back to this dialog box that I choose the DR from my list of tables. So that's why I said in the beginning, if you need a new table, create it before you go into the symbol builder. That way it'll be on your list. And then I can just call this whatever I want. And then once again, I'm going to save it to here for both the PNG or the DWG and the PNG itself. Sure. Well, actually, let me just put a little underscore one after the fact. There we go. I'll say yes. So I can insert this symbol. Let's put it right now. Let's put it down here and give it a different tag name. Now I'm going to hit the lookup button. And notice that it went to the DR category. If I want an Indramat catalog number, I can assign it an Indramat catalog number. Now it's telling me I already have a pin list, so I'm going to say assign it, leave the existing, put the rating in there for me. I could fill in descriptions just like I did before. Installation, location, whatever. And then here's my new symbol that was created directly from an existing AutoCAD block. So I started with this. It was a block. I exploded it, got rid of some of the detail. So I used the same block that goes in my panel for a schematic drawing. I know we're running out of time here, so let me give you an example of the footprint symbol that I would create for this setup, for this drive. So right now, this is the generic AutoCAD block. It's the one that goes in the panel. It's the full scale, one-to-one, -one, so on and so forth. Straight from AutoCAD. I'm going to explode it. So now everything's generic, as you can see. You got regular text, got some graphics. So now I want to create a footprint symbol out of this. I'm going to go to my panel tab. Notice that the symbol builder is here as well. It's the same thing. Usually when you create a footprint symbol, you normally be in a panel drawing. I'm not. 
So I just still picked it from the panel tab. I'll select objects. Pick a base point. Remember, this is my footprint symbol. So I'm going to choose the midpoint of my vertical line on the left as the insertion point when I insert it into my panel. And this is going to be a panel footprint. Notice when you go to panel footprint, there is no more types. It's only generic, which makes it nice. And the thing with footprint symbols is that you only need one attribute. That's it. And that's your tag attribute. So I'll pick insert attribute. I'll drop it down, let's say right here. And the reason why I don't have to fill in the rest of these attributes is because with the footprint category, it automatically adds these as X data. X data is invisible data. So when I go to insert this footprint symbol, in the insert edit component dialog box appears, I'm going to still see catalog, manufacturer, installation, location, tag, because it's all assigned via X data. The only reason why you would need to insert any of these other attributes would be if you wanted, let's say, the descriptions to show up in the footprint symbol, the ones that you just placed down on the schematic or you wanted the installation or location to show up here. It's, it's basically a visual thing, but all the data will be there from an attribute standpoint. It's just supplied by X data. So I'll go back to Symbol Builder and I'll say I'm done. Nice thing about footprint symbols, there is no naming convention. You can name it anything you want. So having said that, and it doesn't matter what's in the unique identifier, it doesn't matter what's down here, I'm going to call this FP Indomat, Indramat Drive Dash 3, because I've got a couple other ones. I don't need an icon image a png because when you insert footprint symbols you don't insert them via the icon menu remember you insert them via the catalog number now it says it found 15 errors you can discount that it's just because i didn't insert the rest of these attributes so at this point once again i'm just going to point it to where i want to save it and pick ok I'm going to say no here. So now I've got a new footprint symbol that needs to go into my panel. Now, before I can go and insert that footprint symbol, remember you have to modify the footprint database. So right now I just created a schematic symbol. I just created a footprint symbol. Now I need to tie them together. I still need to add a catalog number or I could use an existing one, but I'm going to do it from scratch. Um, I need to add a catalog number and then I need to link the catalog number to the footprint symbol itself. So as an example, back here in my catalog browser, I'll go into edit mode. And I'll copy this row and I'll paste it in to my next available. And I'll just change the catalog number and leave everything else. So I'll just put an underscore one at the end of this. Accept it. So now I have this particular catalog number. Let me copy that to the clipboard real quick here. Whoop. So I don't forget the name. So 
So now I have a catalog number in the parts database. So I got my schematic symbol, footprint symbol, catalog number. Now I need to link the two of them together and I do that through the footprint database editor. So I'll say edit existing table. I'll choose Indramat. And we have a separate video on just footprint symbols and linking them together. I'm going kind of fast here. I know we have a separate, did a separate webinar on just that in case you're weak or want to, you know, in that category, let's say. So I'll say add new, catalog number. And then I link it to the footprint symbol, which in this case, I'm storing. in this particular folder. And the file name, the one I just created, you can see today's date right there. So now I'm linking the catalog number to the block, the footprint symbol that I just created. So now, if I wanna insert that footprint symbol, I'll go to my schematic list, do all, and sort the list, make sure it's sorted by the tag name. I'll mark all the existing symbols that have already been inserted and even hide them. So here's the one that I just inserted. Did I put a catalog number? I did. Hold on a minute. Let me close this. Let me go back to the schematic. And let me give it the new catalog number. Which is this one. So now when I go back to my schematic list to insert my footprint symbols. Let me reload this. Now it's got the right catalog number on there. Make sure it rotates at zero degrees. Now when I pick insert, it's gonna know what footprint symbol to use because I just linked the catalog number to the footprint symbol. And like I said, remember I didn't include any of these attributes in the footprint block itself when I created it, but they're all still there. It's getting all the information, carrying it over from whatever I filled in on the schematic. So I didn't insert the attributes in the symbol, but it automatically applies them through X data. If I didn't link the footprint symbol that I created to the block with the footprint database, it would have no idea what to insert there. It would have been stuck. I would have had to go to choice B, you know, when you go to the icon menu to insert footprint symbols. But as far as creating them, all you need, remember, is that one tag attribute. So I know we went a little bit longer than normal, but that's how we can use the symbol builder to create schematic and footprint symbols. On the schematic side, just remember, keep, keep in mind a table in the parts database. Create the table if one doesn't exist already. If one exists, make sure you choose the correct table when you're creating the symbol. And it's the table attribute is the family code in the symbol. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Let's see how Julie's doing on questions. Hey, we got we have a couple. Um, the first one is from Kevin, and he says. I need contacts for a control switch, a relay, a selector switch, 
and an aux switch? Should I create four separate contacts with different family codes for each, or can I create one contact and include the four family codes? Um, you need to create contacts. Well, usually what you do, contacts would typically be a child symbol. So when you create the child symbol, you would give it the same tag or the same family code as whatever the um, whatever the parent symbol is. Now, keep in mind also, child symbols usually don't use the family code attribute because you don't include catalog numbers in a child symbol. So, if it's if you wanted to create parent symbols for each one of these, you know, the, the family code, remember, is a table in the parts database. If it is going to be a parent symbol, if a contact is going to be a parent symbol, then you will need the family code. And, you know, it's just a matter of, it's up to you whether you want to give them different ones or the same. Remember, the family code is ultimately a table in the parts database. For, so for each one of those symbols, when you insert it and you hit the catalog lookup, you know, are you looking for push button contacts? Are you looking for relay contacts? You gotta make sure you give it the right family code. So in this case, they would be four separate ones if you wanted to insert those as parent symbols. So if you wanted the contact to go to the PB category, because it's if it's a push button contact, that would be the family code PB. Same with CR, whatever else you had there. Okay. Um, the next one is from Tyler. He is asking, can the symbols we create, such as the circuit breaker one we made up earlier, can we get that to show up in the icon menu under the schematic tab? Well, of course you can. That's a separate webinar. <laughs> <laughs> but let me... Let me just show you real quick, not a problem at all. On your schematic tab, and this is nice because it is quick and easy. If you want your own custom symbols, glad you asked that, because I have a few down here, as you can see. I've got this custom one where I have some uh, solenoids and prox switches for pneumatic drawings. I've got this Hagerman symbols, which there's the drive that I just created or something similar. Point being, yes, you can add anything to the icon menu, and you do that through this icon menu wizard. So I would take that breaker that I just created, make sure that I choose the right icon menu itself. So let's say I want to put that breaker that I just created under this custom menu right here. Whoop. That's not a custom menu. I'll put it under Hagerman symbols. So I would go up to add and I would say component. Name, I'll say custom breaker. Image file, remember it created it for me? There it is right there, right? And then what is the block? And that's going to be the custom breaker. So here's the image file that it's going to use in the menu. And then when you click on the image file, it's going to know to use this particular block. So I pick OK. There it is. Now when I go back to my icon menu, let me go back to a schematic drawing. And I go to Hagerman symbols in this case. There's my breaker. And I can insert it into my drawing. So nice thing is pretty, pretty straightforward process. 
Okay, next, can we combine IEC and ANSI standards graphics into a single symbol? You can build anything you want in a symbol. As far as graphics, I mean, look at the difference between the drive and the breaker. Graphics, remember, you're creating a custom symbol. Whatever graphics you decide to put in there is completely up to you. Obviously, you need the attributes, you need the connection point attributes, but graphically, doesn't matter to us what you include in that symbol. Okay, and a couple of questions have come in about where can I access other webinars. If you go to our website, hagerman.com, you will see events pull down. And from there, you'll see all the live ones as well as any of the recorded ones. And then you can search on whatever topic you're looking for. If there are particular ones that you're looking for, um, please feel free to email Ashley or your account manager and we will make sure to get you a link to those specific ones that you're looking for. Yeah, and I'm looking at one question down here. We're gonna cover the panel blocks that show wire term data. That was the previous webinar that we did as well. So you will be able to find that up on our website. Absolutely. That's for George. I think we're out of questions. Okay. Obviously, if you do have more questions, send them along and we'll get back to you. Ashley? Okay, well, thank you guys for the, thanks Greg for the presentation and Julia for helping with questions. Thank you all for listening and participating. Um, a reminder that you will, will receive a follow-up email tomorrow with the recording of today's presentation. And also as we close down, a short survey will pop up. It's just four questions. Um, and we thank you for attending and have a great day, everybody.